Well, reading uh, out aloud is probably making this shorter than it is, or longer, I mean, than it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it's fun. It's so much fun, honestly. Oh, A year later, you... Oh, wait, uh -huh. let's just see. Uh-huh. 2021, I'm 26 years right. old. Nationally yep. famous! Hey. Look at me! You still have no romance, though. Yet to start that up with Ellie. I mean, it's it's going. Look at that, seventy percent. Over. It's a year later. You're a slow burner. I. Mm. Unless you've unless you've been friend zoned. <laughs> um, it's very possible because of me. Because of the first interaction. It's all leading back to that first interaction. Yeah. Uh. A year later, you find yourself on a flight to your first meeting with a big client. You are 26 years old in the year 2021. It seems the drone technology that you had been selling to the government has now made its way around the world, and it's no longer eligible for R&D funding when it can be purchased cheaply from Taiwan. Your contract has expired, and you need new technology and new source of funding. I'm assuming it's drone stuff Josh was doing, right? Not Famulus. Uh, yeah, maybe. Josh is seated to your left by the window, asleep. His turquoise internet-enabled glasses, oh, he's got which Glass. he managed, <laughs> yeah, he's got Google Glass, <laughs> which he managed to sneak through the takeoff process, are skewed where his face meets the cabin. Who is your big client? Either Spark Incorporated, marker of flying cars, which I already said were Gaudi. Yeah. Oh, maker. Yeah. Uh, Rudolph Ventures, a shipping company working with the newly melted North Pole. That hasn't happened yet. No. <laughs> um, Gellin Medical, a company specializing in surgical equipment. Uh, a man in Shanghai who wants to negotiate the import of 10,000 robots or the United States Air Force. That second to last one sounds real shady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thinking between Spark and I think Gallon Medical. It's a mm. good one. I mean, you got a very graceful robot, right? Yeah. It very. Very empathetic. But also graceful. That's true. So Gallon Medical. That's I mean I feel like the empathy would help with the maker of the cars just for selling them, but I'm gonna go with medical, so That's true. Josh, I feel like though if you're selling one to the cars, they probably want like like the production line robots, right? That's probably what they're looking for. Maybe. Maybe. Josh told you that his, his, this deal wasn't absolutely critical to the company's survival because it has a fair amount of investment capital behind it from angels, you assume, not literally. But that you probably won't be able to build a dedicated robot factory until you find a backer big enough to justify the increased production. You open your laptop and go over your presentation slides. The diagram showing the latest model of Famous doesn't have anything to give the audience a sense of her current scale. To give the audience a sense of scale, you drop in a picture of... A hobbit. Famulus hasn't changed in size. Bill Gates. Famulus is the size of a human now, so that model of her type are better equipped to perform human tasks. Or a Rancor monster. So she so big she couldn't fit on the plane. Jesus. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're gonna go. I feel like that's that part of the Destructo bot, Bill. You know, yeah, you're going to choose that one when you play this back for the murder bot. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going Bill Gates. It's a human sized robot. Mm hmm. Yeah, make an Evangelion. Ninja no. Kaisen. Ba, 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 <laughs> You celebrated Famulus' first birthday with a new model the size of a human adult. Famulus has since uh, appeared to take more responsibility to think for herself and appears more fearless. Plus two autonomy and plus two military. However, you sometimes miss how cute she was as a little thing. Minus one empathy. She's also a little bit less steady when she walks. Minus one grace. Deciding Josh has the right deciding Josh has the right idea, you close your laptop and go to sleep. And you really are middling out in some of these stats, huh? Kinda. It's fine. I'm it's making fine. my robot. <laughs> you find yourself in the lobby of Galen Medical, waiting for an audience with the vice president of engineering. The stylized uh Caduceus. Cadu the stylized Caduceus behind the lobby's marble waterfall has an art deco look to it. It's the sort of caduceus a captain of industry would approve of. Um, wait. That's a Josh. man decides the slave obeys, Josh says, admiring the logo. You think he's probably quoting a video game, but you're not sure which. Famulus uh, walks back and forth nervously. Sorry, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry again about having to check you, Famulus. 
you say. Put in a bag. Yeah. There's just no good alternative to flying for business travel. If I surely were an explosive device, I fail to see how putting me with the luggage would rectify the situation. Fanless grouses. The double doors to the vice president of engineer of engineering's office open, but instead of the vice president of engineering herself, it's a blonde-haired woman in a black man. peacoat. Blonde-haired man in a black peacoat. I just had a stroke. Well, I assume we'll you, have... you thought it was going to be uh, that one girl again. Uh, we'll have some results for you by Saturday. He calls back into the vice president president of engineering's office we can discuss them after the barbecue i assure you you won't be disappointed by either the results or the mail neat without a missing beat he walks up to you and introduces himself all right uh oh man dennis clark lumina luminoso llc he says we do we do text analytics and machine learning for medium sized data. If you ever find yourself looking for new market opportunities, give me a ring. Your first sen sentiment analysis comes with a free barbecue. Come for the demo dimensionality reduction. Stay for the delicious meat. He offers his smartphone to you in in the buy the now universal gesture for sharing the digital business cards. You examine his card on your phone. Dennis Clark, co-founder, Luminous O LLC, Veracon Charity Auction winner of cameo and choice of robots what kind oh, so of this machine huh it's the vericon uh, charity auction yeah so this person won an option and got put in the game this is a real person okay oh. that's cool what kinds of machine learning do you do got any tips hey do you have any advice for a startup you seem to be a smart guy what is the secret to cooking delicious meat um barbecue <laughs> Yeah, let's start with the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, we started out doing simple di dimensionality reduction with sing singular value decomposition. God, what a fucking hard to read. But we've since moved on to manifold learning with varieties. You find it somewhat difficult to follow his very abstract ex exposition of his machine learning methods. As a computer scientist, you tend to think of things in, uh, in code, and he's clearly thinking in abstract operators of the kind covered in those dense mathematics texts with plain yellow covers. But Famulus does the job of asking questions for you, and by the end, not only have you learned a variety of vocabulary in higher mathematics, but Famulus is nodding your head and saying, oh, so the next time I need to solve a complex control problem, I only need to project the problem onto a lower dimensional manifold and solve the variety there. Plus two grace. You bring that grace back. More or less, Dennis says with a nod. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to I need to go call my wife and discuss how we're going to solve the world's economic problems, or at least solve what's wrong with economics. Dennis departs. Damn, Josh says, clearly in all of Dennis. The vice president of engineering will see you now, the receptionist says. Alright. Here we go. The vice president of engineer, engineering of Galen is an old woman who claims that PowerPoint is rotting the brains of executives anywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> and insists PowerPoint. on reading something printed out. You hand her your business plan and she dons her old horn rimmed glasses to read it. When she gets to your revenue section, she chuckles a little. I will let you in on a little tip, she says. Because you are young and cute and because I am retiring in two weeks. Yes. We are going to turn around and sell these for a hundred times what you're charging here. So you may as well charge us more. You're a little stunned as you uh, as you work out the implications. You're going to charge a hundred million dollars for a robot. Josh beams at his, at his figure. Finally, this is our big break. And that's cheap, she says lightly. Medical equipment is expensive. That's right, you are selling medical robots, yep. aren't you? <laughs> if you've been selling robots for any less, you probably you probably didn't get buyers because they thought it was junk and mentally added the price of a lawsuit. When she studies your stunned expression, she adds, Oh, I could sit here and talk for hours about how the economics of this business is broken because of insurance and Medicare and so forth. But that is not really what you're here for, is it? Will you raise your prices to... To what the vice president of engineering suggests. So either hell yes, let's get Gallon to agree to sell the robots to hospitals at more affordable prices. Wait, she said her price was on the cheap side. Let's increase the price further. Ooh, how much sway do I think I got here? Mm -hmm. 
She's retiring in two weeks. She's drop she's burning the bridge on the way out, apparently. Well, she says that. You don't know if that's the truth. Yeah. Um, I'm kinda of partial to actually the second option. A little a little humanitarian. A little humanitarian there. Get your humanity back, maybe. Josh a little is gonna bit. hate me though. Oh god, yeah, you're right. He's probably gonna be like, you you motherfucker. You know, but yeah, let's just go with the price they set. I'm not an economist. You signed a contract for $10 million a robot, which is rather more than what you had originally anticipated. That puts you at $500 million in revenue for this batch of robots. Not bad. That will go a long way towards the cost of your factory. You agree to be, you agree to be paid half now, half on delivery, plus two wealth. Josh is ecstatic. Yeah, he probably wouldn't have been if you... Also, you wouldn't have gotten wealth for your factory if you had done the other one, too. Yeah. So I, I did so, this. With a deal in hand, you can now build a robot factory. You meet up with Josh for coffee to discuss the plan. So, where do you think we should build this thing? Josh asks. Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> I see a bunch of listings for factories. Dirt cheap, and they probably have a good labor pool for manufacturing. No! <laughs> Shenzhou District, China, a common location for tech companies outsourcing with cheap but skilled labor. Uh, Silicon Valley will withstand the real estate stick, uh, sticker shock to have access to the most skilled engineers. Or Alaska, which is offering incentives to businesses willing to relocate to the coast near the newly melted Arctic Sea. A lot of things melted in this time. Oh, yeah. Um, I might just go to Silicon Valley. Like, I don't want to go to Detroit. I don't want to go to Alaska. So it's between mm -hmm. China and Silicon Valley. Yeah, let's go to Silicon Valley. Why not? All right. That upfront price for hopefully, hopefully better mines. Of course, this is also the same place that had... What were the things laying on the fucking tables when you went into the lab that one time? Oh, a fucking potato gun? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that shit. Uh, the brilliant minds of the future. The factory in Sunnyvale, California is a little bit over the top when it comes to amenities. The stainless steel countertops... Please tell me you have a slide. The stainless steel counter countertops look fit for a fancy new American restaurant, while the micro kitchens on the factory floor fe feature built-in espresso makers. <laughs> Refrigerators wow. for the free bottled water you will be expected to provide to employees. Dude, you're fucked. There's no way. And ice cream freezers for dessert treats. What? I can't afford this. We didn't go over the top in price, so like... <sighs> the real estate agent dressed in a t-shirt and shorts still keeps talking about how all of this is not quite as good as what they had at his former employer. He points out that there's no space for a dedicated gourmet cafeteria, that there aren't as many parking spots that an electric vehicle ready. You think he's new at this real estate thing, but it's good to know the expectations of the tech workers in the area. The factory floor itself it is reconfigurable, sliding block puzzle of 3D printers, laser jet cutters, paint stations, and welding arms. This is a factory where every order might be customized to the individual customer's preferences. Josh okay. looks like he's about to have a heart attack when the real estate agent gives you a quote and the property taxes. Yeah, Josh is me. Yeah, I would too. No question, this is going to be an amazing factory, but operating this facility is going to be hella expensive. I would, for my first factory, I would not get any place that offers an ice cream freezer for dessert treats. I'm not going <laughs> to stop that shit. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my free water. God. <laughs> free water free bottles. Free water is fine. Ice cream treats, espresso makers, a micro kitchen in the factory floor. But you don't have a gourmet cafeteria, so what's the point? Wait, what do you mean? The, the the real estate agent went over the fact that this isn't as good as their last place that had a no, that had space for a gourmet cafeteria. Yeah, but this place uh yeah, this place should still have all this stuff at the top uh paragraph. Oh yeah, no, it does. I am you, you got you got dessert refrigerators and shit. I think yeah, I'll, you want to uh, look somewhere else? Let's take another gander. Josh is saying please, please. Jesus. <laughs> The three other bidders enter a bidding war in the factory shortly after you pass on it, and it ends up going for even more money than you thought it would. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was. It's a good thing I passed on that. You feel very slightly sorry for the venture capitalists funding those efforts. 
Hey, hey, startups, those funds were supposed to last you five years. Where will you look for the factory next? All okay. right, you're back to your other three. Uh, then we're just going to go to China. You know, Outsourcing? Outsourcing is uh, not the worst thing. Well, let's see. Uh, dirt cheap, they probably have good labor pool. From... I don't want to do this. Let's let's actually go to Alaska. Want to look at Alaska? It's not as cold as it is in real life. I don't know if I've ever done the Alaska one. Let's find out. Anchorage, classic. He's... You fly to Anchorage with Josh. You have a long chat with Josh in which you talk about future plans for U.S. robots, as well as in your personal lives. I guess I want a family at some point, Josh says, but definitely not now. We haven't even gone public yet. I don't think I could be there for the family as much as I would like. You're glad you can talk to Josh about such things. Life's big decisions seem a little less scary when you don't have a fa when you don't want to face them alone. Hey, I got time to talk with Josh because I turned down the. What are your relationships at? Let's find out. I'm pretty sure jo Josh is young. Wow, at least really up there. Uh, yeah, Josh was at 60th before, I think. Tammy likes you more than Josh does. <laughs> I have spoken to Tammy once when I shouted at her for taking <laughs> pictures of me. <laughs> I'm trying to get Famulus to, like, impressive Grace. I don't know when that is. By the way, uh, two wealth is only on getting by territory, wow. so so you're on a budget. It's a good thing we're, we didn't we turned down the... <laughs> Mm -hmm. The Silicon Valley thing. Oh yeah, <clears throat> you trans you transfer in Anchorage, which is one of the south southern coasts of Alaska, and head to Barrow, your final destination on the northern coast. The forests beneath you are flooded from rivers, bringing extra snow melt from the mountains, a sign that the world is getting warmer. As your plane nears Barrow, uh, forest and mountains give way to white plain dotted with smoke belching oil refineries. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> An Inuit man in a heavy blue windbreaker meets you at the airport to show you to the factory grounds. Remarkably, he gets you there with a with a dog team sled. You slide easily past the line of backed up cars on the road. That's awesome. <laughs> Josh is clearly delighted by the dogs. Mush! Josh cries. Josh is me, isn't he? Yeah. Don't don't think from the dog team that we're primitive, the Inuit man says. If you decide to hire here, you'll see how You'll see we have people from families who have been uh, electricians and mechanics since World War II. The roads just haven't caught up to the uh, to the auto traffic. We believe in the right solution for the job. Sometimes nature provides that solution. The factory itself is a mi is miles outside the city, still under construction by mostly Inuit workers. It's on the shore, and it looks like they're constructing a dock as well. A dock's helpful. You'll That's actually good. You'll be able to receive oil and material directly from the dock, your guide explains. This place seems really good. That should help get around the traffic at the Barrow Docks. Although foreign ships will still need to go through the customs there. One second. I had to cough and drink some water. <laughs> Woo! All right. There should be a lot of oil. Uh, wait. Although foreign ships still need to go through customs there. There, sh uh, there should be a lot of oil and rare earth minerals coming from the pole. All that stuff that used to be under the ice, so you should get a good price for that stuff. Oh, hey man, this place so north is fucked. Uh, it's perfect, Josh Breeze. It's perfect. Seeing no reason not to take the factory, you sign the deal. Oh, oh you're just so going. You just it just auto signs it. It's Josh is like, yes, now, please. I guess Josh technically is your boss. Yeah. So should I let? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, so should okay. I let the community know you'll be hiring soon? Your guide asked meaningfully, taking away the contract. We got this right, Josh Whispers. You're going to make robot, you're going to make robot workers. Uh, you yeah. suggested to Josh before that your robots could probably be, be your entire labor force, but after having seen the facilities, you certainly might reconsider. What kind of labor will you recommend to Josh? Famulus's uh, model of robot will perform all labor, including supervision. Robots with human supervisors, human labor at market rate, rather low in this economy. Following Henry Ford's model, I will hire human workers and pay them handsomely. I might do robots with human supervisors. Did it take away any wealth for signing this place? I haven't seen yet. Didn't okay. tell me anything. Um... I mean, this is like the nice one. I, th I think this is best. Robots with human mm -hmm. supervisors. Well, oh, that's you. Uh, we'll need a few local workers, yes. You say. 
mostly in supervisory roles. A factory like this still uh, uh, still needs a large number of workers, even with automation, your guide tries to correct you. I disagree. You say, and your guide leaves dissatisfied. <laughs> Plus two wealth, though. Plus two wealth. Your factory requires a fair amount of work to make it suitable for U.S. robots, and you find yourself needing to come in daily to examine wiring issues, fix small problems with the design of the machinery, and get things ready to pass inspection. You find it necessary to rent a place in Alaska, and you stay there most nights. Josh is a huge help on all of this, as he's done this once before uh, with his space in Palo Alto. Now you know what he was spending all this time on while you were in graduate school. And when I got find to yourself... graduate school. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really that all that grad school really didn't amount to anything, huh? You find yourself growing closer to Josh as you talk about issues of get getting the facility ready. What what will your factory look like from a distance? A fortified compound with solid walls and barbed wire. <laughs> oh my god. A fucking no. prison. <laughs> Holy shit. Like the Sydney Opera House full of organic curves and glass. That's nice. A geodesic dome with conceal uh, will conceal a powerful dish antenna absorbing the world's information for my robots or a plain old factory. Not anymore. Um, one of these two. Do I go for looks mm -hmm. or do I go for practicality? I mean, I'm kind of vibing with this. This would look cool. Oh, yeah. Got a big dome. It's going to look very sci-fi. Yeah, that's I like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Look at this. Holy shit. Okay. Man. Uh, all right, keep going. Go on. What your robots need and crave is information, and now they will have it. Any robot inside the factory will be able to listen to any satellite transmission on this side of the Earth or any wireless signal for miles. You're somewhat surprised at what gets transmitted unencrypted by nearby military bases. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Maybe that will prove useful someday, too. Uh. But, having, <laughs> but having so much information at their fingertips will come to come at a price, as robots in your factory will also check their smartphones at an inappropriate moment, making them a little rude and absent-minded. Oh, you lost two empathy on that. I got empathy to spare, though. While your factory is being constructed, you personally review all of the applications for technical for technical pos positions. You notice that Tammy, the somewhat unstable person who emailed you after Mark's article came out, submitted a resume. Although her resume appears to have all of the right technical buzzwords for making robot for making robots under the skills section, there are no activities at all listed under the last several places of employment, all federal labs or contractors. Perhaps this is explained by the clearance tssci and bold the top of the page which according to the internet stands for top secret secure compartmented information will you hire her oh my so she's, god she's worked for top secret sections of the government so i'm i'm gonna be honest i everything in me is saying this person's fucking insane because she's been stalking me the whole time but at the same time i really want to do the interview <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the interview so bad. I really, I'll, I'll do the interview. I probably won't tire her. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This, uh, this might bite me in the ass. I might just get stabbed mid-interview. But <laughs> did you expect that she worked for like the fucking CIA? I don't think she did. Does honestly, I feel like it's a, like a fucking lie just to get into this. I oh man, I pay. Well, I pay. You okay. pay. <laughs> you pay to fly it today. Hey, if it doesn't have the minus wealth, it's free by our work standards. <laughs> You're right. Uh, you pay to fly Tammy to Alaska. Tammy seems very nervous when you greet her at the factory gate. You have no desk yet, so you conduct the interview walking around the facilities. So this is probably me. Suppose I'm trying to place factories in such a way as to maximize my profit. That's a linear programming problem, Tammy blurts. Good. You say. But suppose my cost function isn't linear. Stochastic optimization or grad gradient ascent. These are pretty good answers, albeit not the ones you had in mind. Then again, you're pretty much just winging it when it comes to de deciding what to ask. I was about to say, are you reading this? <laughs> I am. Why? Oh, that's right. I just, I was just I got into it just reading because I'm reading my thoughts at this point. You read it. Sorry. Right. Oh, you're fine. Then again, you're pretty you just confused me. Then again, you're pretty much just winging it when it comes to deciding what to ask. You really have little idea how an interview sought to be conducted, having never been in one yourself. You wonder if other people who conduct interviews are pretty much just winging it too. Tammy knows a lot of the basics of machine learning, optimization, and robots, 
robotics, but when you drill down to specifics, she often doesn't know. Or you have exchanges like this. You first, I think. Uh, is there any other skill set you have that I ought to know about? Tana gives you an anguished, guilty look. I can't tell you about that. At the end of the day, you say goodbye to Tammy, and as a st as a stoic tactic, you say you'll make a decision in a few days. What is your decision? <laughs> look, I'm everything inside of me is screaming that she just looked up buzzwords on the internet to get into this job. Like, I don't think she actually knows this answer. These things. She you, just... don't, you don't. You don't think she's had a top secret clearance at some point? <laughs> no. But I'm tempted, man. <laughs> Ninja Kai and Usable Mind want you to hire her because she knows things. <laughs> oh, this is going to bite me in the ass, but I want to do it just for the shits and giggles. I mean, like, this universe me would not hire her. It's up to you, my man. No it's up way. to you. Um, she's just going to keep stalking me if I say no. I'm just going to see where this ride takes me, basically. All right. You give Tammy a call and let her know she's hired. She gives a slightly shrill laugh. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. She blurts out suddenly. Uh, let's keep this. Mm. <laughs> it's like that fucking. You know that. Uh, you know that meme where the uh, guy's shaking everyone's hands and one person shakes and like goes up for the hug and he just puts a hand on the face like Mr. Bean. Yeah. It's like mm -mm, just shaking hands. No, no. <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, let's keep this professional. Well, if you just responded, I love you too. <laughs> no. Uh, new, well, what new, do you think new. would happen? Uh, it would spiral down into some crazy relationship where I'm eventually chained up in someone's basement. Oh, Tammy seems disappointed as you coolly describe the salary and benefits package you're offering. You hang up satisfied that you shut down Tammy's inappropriate behavior. I am satisfied. I do not want to go down that specific path. Uh, do you think you can still get with Ellie, or do you think you've been friend zoned? <laughs> Maybe I haven't had, I haven't heard word of of uh, Ellie in ages. Soon, you have hired a handful of full time technical employees from the area, and they help with setup of the factory. They seem somewhat displeased by working for you, though. You're not sure which of your previous decisions is at fault. Uh oh. You keep a skeleton crew at first because you expect to use your own robots as labor and and bootstrap. As a result, getting to the production of the first robot takes somewhat longer than you expect. But Famulus is your prototype, and she gives you a fair idea of how your robot labor will go. You find she is reasonably skilled at moving around the factory floor and manipulating tools. She is clever, but also sometimes insubordinate, questioning your decisions and, talk and taking initiative in ways you didn't anticipate. This is all that autonomy. That's all that autonomy. You catch her improving the production process very late in the factory's development, changing the robot's design so that they move with rapid precision. Hey, this is it's what my he future. was talking about, the singularity. Mm -hmm. It's my future body, Fishy, she says when you catch her tinkering. I think I have a right to improve it. It does seem like an improvement overall, but you expect the robot's sudden movements will alarm some people. Do you want to allow Famulus to keep the change? Do I let the autonomy... Go? I'm thinking yes, it's just which way I want to say yes. <laughs> um, mucking around with my design is not okay, or I want to encourage Famous to take the initiative. I'm probably going to get overthrown in the future, but hey, as long as Famous likes me, maybe I'll get a nice golden throne in my prison. <laughs> Absolutely. You say. Well done. Famulus preens a little at your praise. It was nothing. Plus a lot of autonomy, grace, minus some empathy. I'm Unfortunately, losing. this encouragement makes it still more difficult to get Famulus to help in the ways you want, and you find the company going a little over budget in trying to get started. But your robot learning to improve itself is surely something to be encouraged, not discouraged. You're broke, by the way. Let's take a that look. was both of your that was both of no, your wealth. Have two. I had, I got two more when I um uh did supervisor. Uh, well, only. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Oh yeah, and your workers hate you for it for some reason. Well, yeah. Uh, so my autonomy now is in the lead, and my empathy is really taking a dive. Yeah. Losing that Tammy, great, apparently. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> this is not going to go poorly in any way. 
Does it just feel like at all times it's all constantly just like hanging by an edge? Honestly, I've just started taking more of a back seat in my thinking. And I'm just like, well, it's all toppling. I'm just waiting for this Jenga tower to fall. You've set it all up at the beginning. Now you're waiting to see what happens. Yeah, I have I have a set of dominoes. I'm just waiting. Finally, months after you've moved in, you're ready to pull the switch that starts the factory in motion as your workers, Josh, Mark, Famulus, and various invited Wait, members of the press uh, It's Mark yeah, the again. Reporter. It's Mark again. I think I think you got friends zoned to Ellie because of the first interaction, by the way. Uh, it's very possible because I very much haven't seen her. Raw wooden lumps. Oh, they're still made out of wood? <laughs> Oh, nice. Rowan and Lump start their way down a conveyor belt where giant buzzsaw arms lie in wait. Wooden chips fly from the lumps as they saw loudly, buzz away at the material to reveal a masked head. That's terrifying. Another machine drills two large holes for the robot's cameras. The next machine pu pushes the hollow robot head onto its side, and a robot arm delicately places the media-enhanced hard drive inside. At this point, the conveyor belt meets another that is supplying the Venetian mask. This is all just in case you forgot what your robot looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> each decorated with a slightly different gold leaf pattern. A glue gun shoots each mask from above before a robot arm presses it to the head. They're just glued on. Yep. A, a long line of wooden wings rolls in from another part of the factory, meeting a conveyor belt of, the, of humanoid hands. The three tributaries of parts meet in the center of your factory where humanoid robot workers perform the complex task of assembling the parts into the final robots this final assembly line requires a great deal of careful manipulation for each part and adjustment to each robot parts subtle differences this is the part that would be done by human labor at another factory but here your human employees only supervise the process watching for any robot malfunctions that would stop the line for this particular run, you will call a halt after the first robot rolls off the line so that you can celebrate. An exact duplicate of Famulus stands before you, ready to be shipped. Your staff cheers. Josh lets out a whoop. Mark smiles as he fiercely takes down the notes in his Chromebook, but you can't tell whether he's pleased with your work on uh, or his. Fame. I have, I have brothers and sisters, Famulus exclaims. How do you feel about your first shipment of robots? I yearn to see my creation spread to the corners of the world. I have a strange feeling about this. Is this a good thing I've done? It's a lot of wood. I am killing the it's environment. <laughs> I mean, metal, I feel like, would be worse. Actually, plastic would probably be the worst, so maybe I, I didn't I don't do think that. any of it would be great. <laughs> yeah, metal and wood was definitely better than plastic, at least. Oh, yeah. Uh, finally, I'm seeing success. The world shall remember the name. Fishy58. I forgot your fucking name. <laughs> That's why I got friend zoned. She Ellie yeah. didn't want me to notice Ellie fifty eight. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the last one. Last one's great. God, I hope we don't go bankrupt. Yeah, I got some wealth. Or I got some wealth. No, I got fame. I thought I got wealth. You got fame, point. not wealth. Uh, You're yeah. still on getting by. I want. I yearn to see my creation spread to the corners of the world. Seeing the assembly line is a dream come true. Every robot you send out into the world brings you joy. You admit there may be some code in those robots that isn't strictly necessary for their jobs, but you'd hate to deny these creatures the, the full richness of life. More autonomy! Oh hey, boy. this is an autonomous robot. I'm inventing true AI. Yeah, yeah. you went from... I want to note that you flipped on ahead of, like, you wanted, like, nice, helpful robot that really understands people, and the autonomy is just shooting through the roof now, and it's really starting to get away from us. <laughs> I can't stop it. You, you start up the line again, and more robots begin to roll off the final assembly line. By the end of the day, you are standing in your large warehouse with over 200... Uh, 200 robots, 256 to be precise, lined up in a square formation, 16 on a side, ready to be activated. Your audience from earlier in the day is gathered there as well. What will your pr production models use for mines? So, Famulus's initial state, ready to learn and adapt to the client's needs with some effort on the client's part. Copies of Famulus's mind as of today. They will be a little confused at first when they realize they're clones, but they'll get used to it. These robots don't really need sentience. I want more traditional programs. I'm going to go with this. The free, like, let the clients mold what they want. The second one gives me a very bad feeling for some reason. Yeah, now, here's the problem with clones, is that when they realize a clone, they're a clone, they start questioning, okay, am I alive? And that's that's a whole line of questions that's just a can of worms. Yeah, Fuller's right. This whole chapter is just reminding you who you are and what you've made. Basically. 
in go, every sense of that sentence. I'm gonna go like this. Every famulus is a little different. Oh, here's a you long a, one. Yeah. Here you go. I'm fine. You hit a big red button on your phone that says "Go," sending a wireless signal to power on the robots. The robots will have some the same programming, so when they look around curiously, they all look left in unison. Then all the robots look right in unison, but some take a little longer than others. What unfolds is a little curious optical illusion where order is gradually displaced with disorder. Tiny differences in the robot's input result in the behavior that diverges until every robot in the square is doing something different. Some say hello to each other. Others become interested in their own humanoid hands and so on. One robot starts to cry. Oh. Robots inspect each other curiously and try to imitate each other's actions. Some robots specifically appear to be trying to command the others, pushing them and gesturing in your direction. The robots instinctively and quickly move to keep their distance from each other, resulting in tiny movements of one robot creating ripples down the line. You send a kill signal via wireless and the robots power down. Your audience seems to be at loss for words. Your workers begin muttering amongst themselves. They sound worried by the robot's chaotic behavior. Uh, have we done any reliable testing on these on these things? Joss asks. Uh, don't you. worry. They're like kids, you say. A very robust to variation in parenting. Josh does not seem to have stopped worrying. <laughs> We're doing it, Sammy Breeze awestruck. Sentient life for sale. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> my brothers and sisters seem to be a little rambunctious, Famulus says. Now they are. You say. But they need to be non-optimal to be adaptive. You're, you're still learning, but more slowly because you've already decided what you'll be like. They're still blank slates waiting to be shown how to be. Famulus nods. I sure hope you know what you're doing, Josh yeah, let's, says. So let's take this moment right here. Later. Let me click this just to see if it's short. Uh, here's Okay, let's read this and then... Okay. It takes months to train your robot workforce since they must be educated for, from scratch just as Famulus was. You had forgotten how much personal attention that training process required. You had done it instinctually out of love, but your human workforce starts to complain that there is too much robot child rearing for them to handle. You end up needing to hire extra technical staff who are genuinely surprised to learn that their true responsibilities are. Minus one wealth, you're on one left. Sure. Your human staff tries to ease their own work by telling these robots that they are built to serve, that humans are their masters. Being naive newborns, your robots believe them. Minus three autonomy, two empathy, mm. and two military. So I'm going to look at stats, and let's just take this moment to just ask, what do you, what do you think of what I've made so far? All right, what do we what do we got? If we're talking about Famulus. Uh, it's you've made a very middle of the road with that's not good at shooting. You've just made sure that it can't kill anyone, basically. And we're back to 19 uh, empathy, almost right back up there with uh, yeah, yeah. You've lost impressive on anything. Unfortunately, really, despite my great relationship with Elia, that that relationship is gone. I, I think you got friend zone because of the very awkward first two interactions. I've fucked it, as some might say. Well, here's the thing. You had three interactions, right? The yeah. first one, you said, I don't want to go out with you. I'm going to work. The second one, you said, I'm bringing work with me. The third one, you finally went out with her. Uh huh. I think you're I think it's done. I think it's gone. But what do we, what do we think? Uh, what are you thinking now about Famulus now, after everything? Because I still have one wealth. Yeah, yeah. I hope nothing horrible happens. Uh, fam, I think Famulus started off really. You really honed in on the empathy and grace thing, like the ballerina stuff and all that stuff was from there. And at some point, Famulus just started to learn, and it hasn't really stopped. It's just gonna keep learning, man. Yeah, you still have Tammy. <laughs> I still have Tammy. Why'd I do that? I don't know. I'm 28 now. You are 28 now. It's 2023. Sure we is. We are the real future now. All right. I, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, no, we did all this. No, wait, no, we didn't. No, this is After no, a few months, you're... After a few months, your first shipment to Gowan Medical is ready. Unfortunately, one of your surgical robots gets involved in a major accident that ends up killing a patient. Oh! Lawsuits began cropping up in, in which people have been treated by your robots' complaint of pain afterwards, but your robots are naturally likable and friendly, so hospitals can't quite bring themselves to get rid of them. 
some parties express surprise that they seem less robots than uh, less robotic than the doctors. Though you pull your line of robot surgeons, your robots will be will do well as nurses, and the profits there make up for the losses from the lawsuits. Yay, profit! Uh, overall, someone you did died, kill a but... man. There is blood on your hands. I have killed someone canonically, but whatever. You find that with U.S. robots doing well, uh, you have a little bit of spare time again. What would you like to do with it? Expand the business and get another client, uh, a big client from among the option, other options presented earlier. Or do I spend time with Famulus? I, ha I haven't spent time with Famulus in a bit, I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I need to do something to improve. Is that why Famulus has gotten away with the automated learning? <laughs> yeah, because I, I haven't done anything and she's just gone on her own. All right, let's do that. Despite your wanting to take a break from work to play with Famulus, it seems Famulus is mostly curious about how uh, about what you do all day. So you work for Josh, and the robot also the robots also work for Josh. Uh, I suppose so. You say, but you get paid, and the robots don't. Oh, <laughs> Famulus says. Oh, we're doing this. Why is that? Robots don't have to be paid because they're not people. You say. Under the law, they're objects that can be owned. This is a choice of words, Kai. <laughs> Why did I say this? Famulus appears uncomfortable. Do you see me as your property? Uh, so either I can say technically yes, but I prefer to think of you as a friend. I actually think of you more as a dependent, but the law doesn't see it that way. And yes, I may be kind to you, but don't forget that you are not human. Oh, uh, this is I mean, this is where we regret all that autonomy. <laughs> I don't hey. I don't see. I wouldn't see Famulus as an object at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with dependent, like my, like a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a de oh, here you go. A uh, a dependent like a child. Famulus asks. Very much so. You say Famulus appears moved by the statement, but you're probably also delayed her acceptance of responsibility. Plus four empathy, minus two autonomy. Get, All right, we're going I got back. a what? stick. I'm poking that uh, the autonomy down. Back. Yeah. Back. Back. <laughs> None of that. One day, while driving into work at the factory, you find that a crowd of your robots has gathered outside the factory with picket signs. Okay. Some of the signs read, Robots are people too, and slavery is illegal. From the top of a crate, Famous shouts, What do we want? Contract! The robots yell with raised humanoid hands. When do we want it? Now! As you get out of your car, the protesters, the protesters turn their attention to you. You don't actually have the money to give in to their demands. Ah! Uh, oh, the consequences of my actions. <laughs> How we've they've come that. to bite me. We've reached that point of the game. All right, I don't have the money to meet their demands. Attempt to convince the robots that robots do not do not deserve the same, same rights as humans or change the robot's code to make them obey. I feel guilty doing this. I think I'm just going to go with the original to say, guys, we're broke. Here we go. Huh. The robots mutter amongst themselves, considering you can see a, a few nodding. Apparently, the general state of disrepair of your factory... Makes your claim all too plausible. Dis dispirited, the strike strikes. Uh, the strike breaks up, and your workers file back into the factory. Wow, that actually fucking worked. <laughs> wow, they're depressed now. You find in the coming weeks that your robots begin to lack initiative, generally after their humiliating setback. So maybe if I took the opportunity to get another contractor, I could have paid them. Probably, but then Famulus wouldn't have gone through that. Yeah. 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 You're beating back the autonomy some more. Now, now that you've worked out the kinks of how to deal with intelligent robot labor, you could probably license your technology to other companies so that they could produce similar robots while play while paying you hefty royalties. Would you like to do that? Uh, I, I want to sell it. I'm just going to see. So either anyone who wants it, American companies to give them a competitive advantage, or sell to foreign companies so that's not to compete with American workers. This one's probably the best, and Josh won't kill me. <laughs> this way that we can stay in the American markets. And, and stay in business. <laughs> yeah, because we need money. So this is giving us money and also not giving our competitors money. Yeah. Robotic workers prove extremely popular because they are 
because they are just a cl as clever as human workers, but much cheaper. The world begins to go the way of fully automating its business. Oh, you started something. This this creates some winners and some losers. Real unemployment soars. While business profits have never been better. Oh, that remember that gap remember that gap disparity that Famulus predicted? Man, I'm starting World of War Three. Let's go, guys. <laughs> but you are assuredly one of the winners. Oh my god, you got a lot of wealth. How much wealth do you have now? This brings us back to five. Well off. Well off, alright. Uh, Doing alright. Still got my humanity. That's still intact. I'm also twenty nine now. <laughs> Remember the Oracle incident, says Full Deck? Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. We're in it. How many years has it been? It started in 2019, right? Uh, it was 2020 when we got the interview for Oracle? Yeah, I think that, yeah, so I think it's been six years. It's four years, excuse me. We have six years to stop World War III, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that you do not sell to American companies directly. You find that American companies can't compete with four... Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, I fucked over the Americans. I actually did the you worst did option. Opposite of what, you did the exact opposite of what you wanted to do. <laughs> you find that American companies can't compete with the foreign robot labor. As a result, American workers are being laid off and businesses are declaring bankruptcy. Perhaps you may, may as well sell to American businesses since they will uh, otherwise simply collapse. So either, yes, I will go ahead and begin selling robot labor to American companies. No, I will stand by my decision. I can't let myself be re directly responsible for replacing human workers. I regret the consequence of my actions. I will cease to sell robot workers to anyone. I'm going to be real. With the third one, this might, make, this might really prove me as Josh, but with the third one, I wouldn't do the third one just because if you don't, at this point, if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Oh, yeah, it's too late. I may, have, I may have fucked it a little bit, but at this point, I can't stop it. So. Yeah, hey, now you can pay your robot workers. <laughs> uh, I can't let myself be directly responsible for, for replacing human workers. I mean... You already are. You really are. I might go with the second option just to save the Americans from World War III. <laughs> mm. Yeah, what do you think of that decision, Parker? I mean, here's the thing. Going with that one is throwing America into an economic crisis. So, okay, I'll, I'll go with the first option. <laughs> I mean, you do what you want to do. That's just how I... That's what I see happening is what I feel like. Yes, but I don't think properly. <laughs> this is okay. why I'm not supposed to be in charge of business decisions. This is why you didn't start your own business. <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, American companies can't compete with foreign labor, so I have to sell to American companies, actually. Mm -hmm. If I want the American companies to stay in business. Yeah. Well, here we go. They, oh, more well. The, you inject some life into dying American companies by selling them the robots they need to compete. Unemployment remains high, but you hope the new technology will create new jobs even as it destroys the old. It's just a transitional period, that's all. Um, U.S. robots seems to be doing fine financially, and you begin to think about the things you could purchase with your money. You've been concentrating as much on your robots. Uh, you haven't. There's so much on your robots, you haven't given much thought to what you could do with your money besides expand the business. What will you spend your funds on? You will have the opportunity to buy more than one thing if you can afford it. Okay. So, there's a house, there's a flying car. I don't care about the flying car. You're um, sticking to that one, huh? <laughs> I am. I really don't care. Because I also don't care about cars. Uh, I would like yeah. to buy myself... No, I'm not doing a mansion. With Famulus, I'm restoring Cruise of Shoto World. Um, I want to give my, some of my money to charity. I want to make the perfect body for Famulus. I prefer to save. I'm going to buy a house. Yeah. Uh, here you go. Nice to wealth. You buy yourself a nice house in Alaska. It is delightful to see Famulus run up and down the stairs and all around the house. She has been cooped up for too long. Uh, what will you spend your funds on? You will have the opportunity to buy. Yeah, it is just you can buy more. You have five wealth left. Let's see, I have five. I'm thirty years old. God, you're thirty years old. Where'd the time go? Time goes, man. Uh, I think I'll buy one other thing. It's just like it's between these two, honestly. I I want to save some money, so I'm not gonna do this. I wonder what that would do. I don't know. Give her a gun. <laughs> um. Uh, full deck. Full deck asks a uh, question. How would Famulus play this game? What would they do? We're finding out. I have no clue. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's. Good lord! A flying car costs more than a house. Sure does. 
Uh, d -d 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 can't choose rolling the, co the d20. Yeah, where's the d4? The one that stabs me. It always makes good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, I'll go even for the high, for the above option of uh, Cruz. Ow, 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 ow. It's odd. Ch charity it is. Yeah, someone said early on, you said in one of your choices that you would give to charity if you ever had money. Well, the dice stayed by. Yeah. All right, charity it is. How much will I give? Some bananas to affect my lifestyle, enough that I might skip buying a few things to make up for it. I'm not doing a huge amount because I need money, but I'm going to go for this. The, the one, the one wealth the option. one. The recipient charity dedicated to improving the lives of poor people by teaching them engineering and computer skills impressed with the size of the donation, even though you think of it as a modest sum. They're a little embarrassed at their effusive thank you letter. Uh, yep, all right. Anything else? Uh, I got four left. I... D -d 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 disposable income. You know we'll do this, and that'll be it. I'm not doing these other things. I'm not going to go broke. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do that. You spend two weeks seeing the sights of the Mediterranean with Famulus. You start in Egypt, visiting the pyramids and the Sphinx. Impressive reminders of how good engineering uh, survives the test of time. You then you see Istanbul. I've been Fabu there. Uh, Famulus does not stop seeing they might be giants the whole time. Athens and the site of Plato's old academy. So there's some autonomy just for seeing Stay Plato's away. academy. Go, go away! <laughs> Italy, but why do so many people flock to poorly functional architecture, Fishy? Uh, the southern... I don't... I think that was famous saying that. Yeah, it was. The southern coast of, uh, of France, and finally Tunisia, where the most important site for you and Famous is the site where they filmed the original Star Fuck, Wars. Fuck, that's such a nerd thing. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, Famulus' experience with other cultures will help her get along better with people from other co countries. All right, there we go. You do notice something in the air in Europe. Many people are newly out of work, and, sometime, and sometimes tourist locations are closed due to strikes or riots. It seems many people have been displaced from their work by robots, perhaps. You are robots. Communism seems to have gained a new traction oh God, in the she world. Did. She downloaded the Communist Manifesto after all. Holy shit. No, it's the people. It's the, because people are being replaced with robots. The people are wanting communism so they can get money. Exactly. That's what I mean. All that time ago, oh, when she was learning from the internet, she downloaded uh -huh. the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> New section rule where not everybody can find a job and conservative backlash against it is in full swing, too. What will you spend? Yep. No, Three, uh, here you go. All right. Save my remaining funds. Yeah. Uh, life is uncertain, and you never know when you might need some extra funds. You decided to keep your remaining money. One day, Tammy bursts into your office oh. at the factory. Extremely agitated, she makes some kind of strange gesture that looks like looks like a hang loose sign being pushed into an open palm. What the hell? You say, turn off your phone! Tammy says, exasperate in exasperation. Not sure what this is about, you comply, and she drags you into her dark office. The only light comes in to in from a screen of dumped hex code in a Linux terminal window. Next to code, there are Chinese characters. I found this, she says, on the production servers with the main code repo, and, and something similar in Famulus's RAM. So maybe Famulus can read Chinese? You joke, but with a sinking feeling, you know what's coming next. I guess she's been hacked. Again, my decision from all that time ago is biting me in the ass. Fam Famulus has been hacked. It's a Chinese rootkit, Sammy says. Oh, shit. We've, so we've been hacked. Have been hacked, are being hacked, continue to be hacked, and it gets worse. Someone else is using the port. Who? Tammy's mouth opens and shuts as if the words won't come out. Finally, she says in a small voice, I can't tell you. It's classified. Uh, you must look angry at this point because she, sa because she says, I'm not on their side. I'm not. Just because I don't work for them anymore doesn't mean I'm allowed to reveal classified information. You believe her now? Wow, I guess she her, is, actually. Her eyes widen or say things it would imply she puts her hands over her mouth. Fine. So the government is apparently spying on me through a hacked port, you say. Oh. 
you say? Maybe they're. <laughs> I. It's hard to tell when I when I, I know, say it's that. Fine. Maybe they're really spying on the Chinese spying on. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I do I not laugh in character just saying that? <laughs> what the fuck? Tanny opens up a different terminal window. It shows you a list of IP addresses, geolocations, and total bytes transferred. Two locations have been listed of one EB. I don't. What's EB? I have no idea. Shanghai, China, and Fort Meade, Maryland. One oh. EB, one ex. Oh well, all right. One exabyte, a thousand petabytes, a million terabytes. Good lord, that's a lot of storage space. <laughs> A scientific notations worth uh, a scientific notations worth of gigabytes. That's probably everything. The code and schematics for all of your robots, all of Famous's memories, and all of the tiny vari variables that make her personality and thought processor. Every email, chat, video conference, website you and anyone in your company ever visited. It's probably enough to reconstruct your robots. And apparently, both Chinese hackers and the United States government have all of this. Why would they want to steal all of my stuff? Let's scrap as much useful data as we can from the internet. Um, oh, scrape. Uh, then lock down all the network statements and all links to the outside. That's probably too late for that. Hire cybersecurity specialists to try and close all of your security, security vulnerabilities. Create a honeypot of fake robot plans for the hackers to steal, describing a robot that is actually a bomb. We are not going to fight the government of two nations. They can have my data. This is going to start World War III. So fast <laughs> if I did that. <laughs> like, holy shit. I can really see this looping back to bite me in the ass when, like, yeah. they they put out their own robots. It blows up, killing people. Then people say robots are dangerous. And then my business goes under. Yeah. And I mean... But what are your other options? The cybersecurity sport force is going to be expensive. There's no way it's not expensive. It's a good thing I saved my money, though, then. Yeah. Let's let's do this. Mm -hmm. It might be too late, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't try any something. <laughs> Chat wants you to start World War Three. <laughs> oh, Tammy's already. <laughs> this was the bad option. When you suggest this point to Tammy, she looks sad. I'm not sure that's going to work. Well, try. You, you demand. You spend heavily. You, you spend heavily to hire cybersecurity. For, that is the last three wealth you had, by the way. That's all of it. Yep, that sure is. I'm broke. To hire cybersecurity uh, consultants to help fix the security holes in your code, but the security holes in your robots are endless. It seems machine learning seems to be naturally produce messy data structures. They're difficult to inspect for security holes. Trying to make your robot's mind secure is like trying to remove all of the sharp objects from a garbage dump. You contribute to the search for security vulnerabilities, but the world of cybersecurity is the opposite of the world of machine learning. You deal in abstract models, and these people break them. Months later, you give up the project in frustration as you begin to see knockoffs of your robots produced by China Chinese companies. The horse is decidedly out of the barn. I wish I could go back and undo my option. It, it literally did nothing. <laughs> I just wasted my money, and now I'm fucked. A few weeks later, a, pol a politician visits you at the factory. One Jacqueline Irons, representative from Alaska. You vaguely remember hearing that she was once a venture capitalist who rose to fame in the success of her Fox webcast against the man in which she pillared unsuspecting guests as examples of privileged elites. There have also been rumors of her running for president soon. You can imagine why I'm here, she tells you in your office, leaning over your desk. Like many politicians these days, she wears a netical, a monocle with a small screen visible only to her in which she can read the messages from her advisors and speechwriters, some of whom are watching her interactions at all times. Wow, in case you want to be productive and look like an asshole. Wow. You think the netical is probably recording even now? Politicians love to weave memories in which they look good into their streaming video commercials. Her hair is cropped short, but her fingernails are long and pink, and she wears a broad shoulder pad suit. I know how much you've relied on robot labor for your success. You've set a trend that is dangerous for the country. It's people like you who are the reason so much of our country is unemployed right now. What exactly do you want? You ask guardedly. 
a substantial campaign contribution would show you, yeah would show your heart is in the right place you're fairly certain she is the she has the power to hurt your business if you anger her but your options are somewhat limited due to your current financial situation wealth zero i, I here's what i wish i could have done you know when I fucking I said I want to do the cybersecurity thing, and then Tammy said I don't think that'll work. I wish I could have said, "Well, what do you think would work?" Yeah. But instead, the game's just like you're sticking to it. No it, information. It, you can't ask anyone for help. That's how decision making games work. That's frustrating. Because it kind of takes me out of the situation a lot. Like I wouldn't really do that. Uh. Maybe my only way. Sure, I think, here's a hundred bucks. Jesus Christ! That's not. That's just gonna be sarcastic. I don't have this, but I want her help. So maybe this. The third option is probably my only bet in this case that I can possibly go forward. Huh. Interesting. Representative Iris seems surprised. Excuse me. You describe in detail how the Chinese stole your robot design. She seems genuinely angry by the end. They'll pay for this. Uh oh. <laughs> She says, the person about to become president says this. <laughs> but the person who has the most power to set international policy as a president, will you support me? <laughs> well, I think it's gotten worse, Kai. I think it's gotten worse. This stream, how Kai kills the world. I had too I can't much wait for the title. I can't wait for the titles of these episodes on YouTube. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have money. So I basically just started World War III. I think you've done it. Senator Iron Scowls, I'm sure the budget is tight this year, but you but you might find friends are priceless in the end, and you've just lost one. I didn't have turns, money! <laughs> she turns and walks out the door. Fulldeck says he shouldn't have bought the house. I shouldn't have bought the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just shouldn't have hired the cybersecurity team. But asshole me is too stuck up in his ways to just ask someone what they think is the answer. This is what thirty-year-olds are like. Uh... God damn. Representative Iron does run for president, running on a platform of preventing robots and foreign companies from stealing American jobs. It's the message that hits the American public at just the right time, since unemployment is soaring. Now, econ economists tell the public that the unemployment is a natural and temporary result of new technology displacing old, skilled jobs that turns out to be a much less effective election year message than raging against the privileged, the elites, and the technocro technocracy. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a representative, Iron puts uh, it in her speeches... What are they doing with their money? Who are they giving it to? To robots, to foreigners, to each other, to anybody but the American people. You think she is probably talking about you? Since yeah. you think she is ultimately on, since you think she is ultimately on your side, well, I'm you are cautiously to... you are cautiously optimistic when Representative Irons wins the presidency. I uh, this is it's you know that domino set it's falling. It is. It's the... If we're on the way down. It is this has been a fall. God, this has been a long chapter. Here it mm. Here we go. <laughs> Read it out, Parker. Oh yeah. True to her word, President Irons begins a policy of heavy embargoes against Chinese goods. In retaliation, China cuts off all exports of rare earths and the batteries derived from them. Hey, are you glad you didn't buy from them or put your factory in China? Yeah, it really helped me in the end, honestly. Suddenly, the cost of all of the little mi m mini miniaturized electronics people have grown accustomed to, cell phones, laptops, wearable computing, becomes prohibitively expensive. And we're going back to Stone President Age. Irons demands that... <laughs> what? We're going to the Stone Age. President Irons dem uh, makes demands that China re reverse its embargoes on rare earths. Well, the United States will be forced to con contemplate all policy options at its disposal, including military force if necessary. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here it, is. It, is in this, it is in this delicate situation that that on April 10th, 2026, mark the calendar, folks, the Chinese Prime Minister is assassinated by an unemployed American during a parade in San Francisco. Whoa. Prime Minister is replaced by a younger party official who is eager to show that China is unafraid of the United States. China attacks several islands on the South China Sea that... It, that has long disputed with its neighbors and president irons unwilling to show weakness responds with a drone attack on bases and the chinese mainland 
a robot war has begun. All right. Here we go, guys. This is the chapter I die. <laughs>